All right, in this video, we're going to talk about how to create a scratch game that uses a makey makey for controls. So this is a really simple schematic right here. I've got the makey makey, I've got a player, and I've got two sheets of tin foil, aluminum foil, just set on the floor that this player is going to be stepping on. So first of all, how to wire this up. Let's use green to represent the ground, or um, as it's called on the Mickey Mickey Earth. So our green Earth connection is going to be held by the player. And then if the player steps on left pad, and that completes one circuit and sends to the computer the command left. If they step on the right pad, that sends right to the computer. Moving to scratch now, you might at first be tempted to say when the right arrow is pressed, when the left arrow is pressed, but instead what we really want to do is when the green flag gets clicked forever, waiting until the left arrow gets pressed, switching to the next costume, we're going to get a point and then we're going to wait until the left arrow key is not pressed because we don't want to just be able to press the left arrow over and over and over again. We want to wait until they pick up that left foot. Then wait until the right arrow is pressed. Once again, the Mickey Mickey sensing if the left foot is down or the right foot is down and is converting those to key presses, left arrow key and right arrow key. One last thing I want to do is um, have the game reset the points each time the green flag gets clicked. Let's see how this works. Left, right. What if I press left, 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 left? Nothing happens. What if I press right, 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 right? I only get one point. Left, 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 left only gives you one point. You have to alternate left and right. What if I press them both at the same time? What happens? It's waiting for me to pick up one of my feet and then put the other foot down. It's waiting for me to put down a foot and pick up the other. Pick up a foot, put down the other. Next, let's create a timer that's going to count down. There are two ways of doing this. There is a built-in timer. It's in sensing, and it is the most accurate way of doing a clock or a timer. It resets every time the green flag gets pressed. It counts up from zero, and it shows tenths of a second. You could also just create a variable So this script is going to set the time to 30. It's going to repeat 30 times, waiting one second, and then reducing the clock by one. Once it's repeated that 30 times, it is going to stop everything. It's not going to allow me to accrue any more points. Let's test it. We can see the time counting down. That works well. This method, using timer variable, using a clock as a variable, is not as accurate as using the built-in timer, but I like how it counts down. I like how it's easy to understand. This is what I tell my students to do. One last thing, I want to take this opportunity to show how to convert an animated GIF or GIF into a sprite. I have found this animated GIF on Google Images. I downloaded it and I'm going to add a new sprite. Go to Paint New Sprite, choose Upload Costume from File. It adds every single frame from the animated GIF as a costume. Delete this blank one. Now this new sprite doesn't have any scripts, so we're just going to copy them from sprite 1 to sprite 2 by dragging and dropping. And as you can see, it copied it over. Both of these scripts are here. We can actually just delete that sprite if we want to.